terrific performance of the National Anthem. We'll be right back with more. Hold on tight and don't go away. Hi everyone, greetings from 2K Sports. Get ready for some NBA action. I'm Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony, Hall of Famer Doris Burke, and another Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, from the sidelines. And taking a broader look here at the year-over-year -year scoring trend for Malcolm Brogdon. And his scoring numbers have been going in the right direction these past few years. He's gotten better and better at handling what those opposing defenses are throwing his way and, and finding ways to get his points all over the floor. And let's go straight over to David Aldridge for a report before the tip-off. Hey, Dave. Hey, Kevin. Jeru Holiday is in his eighth season with the Pelicans. He said, I've been here the longest with the possible exception of the security guard. There was a ball boy who was here before me, but now he's one of our coaches. Kevin, he's still all in and trying to help the Big Easy get back to the playoffs. Terrific. David, thanks. Deep benches tonight, Greg, on both sides. This seems to be a growing trend. You know, teams are digging deeper than ever before, even getting into the two-way contracts that give you depth past your top 15 guys. One, you're trying to protect the investment in your big ticket items, your franchise caliber players, but you got to keep an eye on the future in terms of player development. That's a, another area where the league has really changed when you look at the makeup of these rosters. Well said. Here's the starting group for the Indiana Pacers. We've got Malcolm Brogdon. He's out there with Karis LeVert. And it's Brissett in at the four slot. And for Milwaukee, Giannis is the four with Lopez the five. Holiday out there with Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Middleton in at the small forward. And this is what Middleton does. Hit trades. He's one of the best in the league at helping his team space the floor. The shot by Brogdon wide open. And the three off target. DiVincenzo passes to Andacumbo. Here's Indiana. It's a three-point game. They're coming off that win against Philadelphia. Yeah, and that was a solid effort on their part. Pretty much what we would have expected, and everything seemed to go according to plan. I think the key, they had great energy, stayed super focused, and never let it get too close down the stretch. Didn't feel them breathing on them. Here's Middleton. Kept the line. Lopez shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. It's going to go on Sabonis. Well, it's clear that Brook Lopez loves getting to the free throw line. He uses his length to pick up these kinds of opportunities. And the first one drops. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Boy, a really soft touch on display. It is a luxury to have a big man who can hit from the line at a consistent rate. Holiday against Brogdon to the right side. Sumner's shot is off. Bucks have gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. And to the Kumbo. And he lays it straight in. So strong. Giannis has really added some bulk since entering the league. Helps him absorb the contact. And that one's good, Brogdon. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. And I think defensively, that is not the way you want to start. Giving up high percentage looks, that doesn't typically end well. And I really marvel at the touch of Antetokounmpo for his size and physique. That's incredible. And we heard Shaquille O'Neal bestow his Superman nickname on Giannis Antetokounmpo, and rightfully so. The Greek freak, the most dominant paint scorer since Shaq himself. And Giannis throws it down. And that move has become second nature for Giannis. Once he establishes position, game over. Brogdon the pass to Levert. Back to Brogdon. Six on the shot clock. That one a little long. And watching out the Kumbo get to the rim, can GA take your breath away? <laughs> Man, he can go around you, through you, or literally jump right over you. Call him the freak, Superman, 
what have you. That none of it feels like an exaggeration. Here's LaVert. Another shot. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Earning a trip to the line. Karis LaVert is one tough guy. Has had to fight through so many leg injuries over the course of his career. Incredible. This is his first free throw of the game. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. Well, it's no secret, guys, that Karis LeVert can flat out score the basketball. I think the key for him moving forward just become more and more efficient because the ability is there. That one falls, so he hits both of them. Milwaukee leading by seven. Stolen by LeVert. Let's go. Offensive rebound. Sabonis. Good D by Lopez. Got to credit the defense. They found a way to stop him, and that's never an easy task. And there it is for him. Middleton's got his second bucket of the night. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they've shot the basketball. Pass to Brissett. To the paint. Here's Sumner. Gets that one to fall after missing his first two. One for three from the field. Yeah, another nice bucket down low. They've really been able to work the ball into the post effectively here so far. Oh, taking it to the rack with power. Hammering down the two-hand slam. And the Pacers with possession here after the basket by Milwaukee. Here's Brogdon. Antetokounmpo pulls it in. I think he's got to settle down because right now it feels like he's rushing, like he's forcing some shots. This quarter he has been completely bothered. Giannis is double. Outside Holiday and another three for Milwaukee. Defensively giving up far too many open rhythm looks. Now Levert. 24-point outing in their last game against Philadelphia. Yeah, don't forget uh, how great he was drawing contact and getting himself to the free-throw line. Picked up a ton of easy points there. Here's Antetokounmpo after Malcolm Brogdon's bucket. And Giannis throws it down. And they have owned the paint so far, and the score reflects it. I know it's early, but you have got to I'm like the dominance out. down low. Right now, they are playing bully basketball. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. They lost the last time they faced the Bucks. That one in Milwaukee. Well, if they want to avoid the outcome of that first meeting, they'll need to be stronger on the glass. They were completely outmatched in the last one. Well, you have to believe the coaching staff made that a point of emphasis. Better aggressiveness, better intensity on the backboards. Quick look now at the NBA scoring leaders. Fifth is Giannis Antetokounmpo. And his contribution to his team offensively cannot be understated. He is always leading the way for them with his ability to put up points. Goes up, and Giannis throws it down. Building up a big early lead, they have taken charge of this game. And they've been doing it largely at the offensive end. If the defense does not adjust, this could be a blowout. Now the Bucks moving it up. And he gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. They have been excellent so far, coming in with a well-balanced attack. On the offensive end, it feels like they're getting the shots they want. And defensively, they are connected and on a string. Doris, we should have a playoff atmosphere here tonight. These sides are going at each other for playoff position. Boy, Kevin, you get the sense that both of these teams know exactly what's at stake here. This is anything but another game on the schedule. And that one's good, Brogdon. There's a certain sort of tenacity that Malcolm Brogdon brings to competition every night. Off the triple drive, okay. There's the lob at the Kumbo. Yeah, nice silky finish on the alley oop from the stupendous feed. That sequence couldn't have been executed any better. 
Pacers trail by 17. Brogdon looking it over. Passes it to Sumner. Lopez with the steal. Here's DiVincenzo. The fast break ends at the rim with a jam. You know this, but if you're open, you can count on Brook Lopez to find you. He uses his height to spot open teammates. Levert against DiVincenzo. Puts up a three. And it's Levert missing. Bucks leading by 19 points. DiVincenzo gets the bucket. DiVincenzo's got seven. That's their third straight make off an assist. Levert the pass to Brissette. Back to Levert. Pass to Sumner. Shot clock at six. That one doesn't drop. Great D that time for Middleton. The pass to DiVincenzo. And a great assist by Antetokounmpo as that one goes in. He's got 10. And I tell you, Antetokounmpo has evolved into one of the better passing forwards in our league. And when the defense is focused on you that much, you need to be able to find the open man. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. Giannis Antetokounmpo has said he doesn't want people calling him the MVP because he doesn't want to relax. He said he fears failure, so he has got to get better. here for Milwaukee. Portis is checked in for Lopez. P.J. Tucker comes in for Antetokounmpo. Pat Connaughton is checked in for Chris Middleton. And it's Bryn Forbes in for Drew Holiday. Now, here's McConnell. He had 10 points in the win against Philadelphia. And the other thing, guys, he really got after it on the backboards. What a complete game for this guy. Well, Greg, there's been some debate. What do you think? Is Giannis the best player right now in the world? I tell you what, if there's a conversation, he has to be in it. You know, some people might go with Kawhi, Kevin Durant. He's coming back. LeBron James is there as well. But Giannis is probably the guy to lead that conversation. And, and already they've taken out a noticeable advantage in terms of aggression and controlling the backboard. And here's Holiday who will bring it up for Indiana. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Down to five on the shot clock. Takes a three. Milwaukee with the rebound. They come into this one having outplayed the Magic last game. Well, they came into that game looking to be physical, looking to control the boards, and they succeeded. That control of the boards, I felt, fed their offense. There were a ton of second chances, a lot of confidence their bigs could dominate the glass. Basket counts. From that in-between range, they've been the much better team. Inside, Holiday misses in close. You can see he just rushed that a little bit. Lost the focus, I think. That'll go on McDermott. That is his first foul of the game. And Milwaukee has possession. Here's Connaughton. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. And here's Steven Chinzo from the arc. And despite that miss, a strong start for them offensively. Outside Holiday. Holiday finds Holiday. a bonus and he makes the bucket gets the whistle and now a three-point play chance here for him and that one gives them a plus five rebound advantage Kevin 
Pacers have had two chances at the line already, making them both. And typically, a strength of theirs, 79% on the season. One shot. as a point guard what is it you like to see from that position on the floor I think first and foremost leadership uh, it, it's so valuable at that spot and you know you, you, you always got to have your head high because your teammates are feeding off what you put forth in terms of your body language and enthusiasm so you know the typical stuff about organizing offense and, and setting the tone on the defensive end that stuff's important as well but so much of how you carry yourself out on the floor when you deal with adversity and you know that you're going to it, it is really paramount pacers trail by 21 mcconnell scanning the floor pass to sabonis Shoots over Portis. Here's McDermott. No good. The Bucks go the other way with it. Here's DiVincenzo. And the layup's good off the glass. DiVincenzo's got 12. His shooting has been outstanding. <laughs> Definitely one of the reasons they're up in this game. Pass to McConnell. Shoots over Portis. Misses off the right eye. Bucks leading by 23. The shot and game clock separated by four. Connington kicks to DiVincenzo. Holiday brings the double team. A nice shot by Tucker. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. To the inside. From six feet. A shot no good. Well, tremendous defensive effort on the interior. That's the kind of contest you want. Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's feeling it tonight and has been the driving force for Milwaukee. What an amazing quarter. There was absolutely no stopping him. We've got more in store for you right after this. And when asked to compare himself to LeBron James, Giannis had this to say. I know if I put the work in, maybe, maybe 10 years from now I can be the same sentence. But I got to put the work in, and whenever I face him, I got to show up. I cannot be taking day off against him. And, Greg, that's the humble, hard-working approach we've come to expect from Giannis. You know, he's not interested in putting himself on a pedestal. Enough people do that for him. He just wants to become the best he can be and win rings. And glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. The guys, we've seen the Bucs really take control here early. The offense firing on all cylinders. They dominated that first period. That's exactly the start you want. You take complete command. Now you've got to maintain that focus. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. On the court for Indiana. They've got Sabonis. Jeremy Lamb out there with McDermott. And it's T.J. McConnell. And it's Holiday in at the two. Drew Holiday who's checked in for the Bucks. Now here's McConnell to the middle. Out to Lamb. And the shot is good. Dropping in off the front of the rim. But DeMontis Sabonis is one of the outstanding passers from the post position that we have in today's game. If you're open, he'll find you. Well, that's not easy to box out like that. It's just great footwork, and that gave him just the time he needed. Pass to Lamb. Sabonis at the elbow. Outside, Lamb. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. The Pacers have gone one of three to start out the second quarter. He has a chance now to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin. Well, if you just look for a few minutes at Giannis Adentacupo on the court, you know why he's called the Greek Freak. But it's the drive that makes him an MVP. He said people try to make it complicated. Life is simple. You know what you want, go get it. Do what it takes every day and don't lie to yourself. 
guys, I hope you understand I'm being truthful in all of these reports. Back to you. Love the intensity, David. Thank you. Down low, Tucker. Up and in, off to an efficient start. Two for three from the field. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. McConnell passes to Lamb. Boy, a clean, close look. What a missed opportunity. Here is Forbes, covered by Lamb. Forbes can't get it to go. And for the Pacers, they're shooting a ghastly 26% from the field. Their offensive game looking completely out of whack. On the wing, Holiday. And DeMontis Sabonis pulls it down. Sabonis has got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. Goes back up, and it's good on the way up. Timeout, timeout. Sabonis has got five. Domantas Sabonis has the ability to keep possessions alive. He's crafty getting position, gets to the offensive window. That's nicely done. And Milwaukee calls their first time out of the game. Breaker, the all-time assist leader for the Big West Conference. In that frame, talk about some of the traits that make for a, for a good floor general, a good point guard, a good facilitator. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you have to be a leader because that's what the position calls for uh, unselfishness instincts that stuff matters but ultimately your play, your teammates got to feel like you play for them uh, and, and that's when you have a team a chance as a team to, to be special I'm assuming you've always been like that am I correct no that oh, is not really? true wow. I evolved into a leader in all seriousness wow. it, you know you, I, I think it, some guys are natural others like myself had to evolve into it and the Bucks with some changes. Lopez, he's checked in for Portis. Antetokounmpo comes in for P.J. Tucker. And Middleton subbed in for Bryn Forbes. So an entirely new group in now for Indiana. Brissett's checked in. Edmund Sumner comes in for Lamb. Karis LeVert's checked in for Aaron Holiday. And Brogdon subbed in for T.J. McConnell. Malcolm Brogdon has been rock solid since he won the Rookie of the Year award. This guy's capable as a scorer, and what a pretty pass there. Now here is Holiday. He had 15 points last out. Here's Middleton. Rebound by Sumner. And uh, Indiana shooting is definitely lagging at the moment. They're just 30% in the second quarter. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. Here's Middleton. An 11-point game for him in the win against Orlando. And he was also a terrific creator in that game as well. His assist total show you what a fantastic all-around effort it was. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the night right now. This season, he has been absolutely locked in at the free throw line. How about 90%? And that one falls for Middleton. And G.A. Chris Middleton over his career, much improved on the defensive end. A, a true two-way player. I tell you, that 6'11 wingspan helps. Able to use that length to bother shots and disrupt passes. Good on both. And really, from second-round pick to all-star, Middleton's story, inspirational. Yet even now, it feels like some people continue to sleep on him. And so it's Middleton with it. He brings it up for the Milwaukee Bucks. Only given up six here in this quarter. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Shooting That's on Milwaukee. Malcolm Brogdon. The Bucks have been on target from the free throw line. They're 5 of 5 in that department. The first free throw is good. No wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. He hits both from the strike. It definitely has the respect of the locker room. Holiday is someone that players enjoy playing with. And here's LeVert. Very solid contribution from him as he averages over 20 points a game. Here's Brogdon, and it's sent back by Lopez. Lopez needs to hold down the fort on defense. An incredible wingspan to get that one. One easy looks. 
Don't allow the defense to set up. What a beautiful fast break opportunity and the finish pretty good. And once again off the mark by Indiana. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Very dangerous to leave a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the D. It's Brogdon on the wing. Guarded by Holiday. Chalk up two there. And it's seven points for Sabonis. Boy, you cannot give Sabonis this kind of advantage. He's got the kind of touch and focus necessary to score it. And the dunk by Giannis. And if you're looking to make a big play with the pass, you've got to love Giannis. He's a big target on those alley-oop lobs. Now, here's Brogdon. Six points for him. Really good rebound in traffic. That's what the big fella's there for. The pass to Middleton. Back to Anadokounmpo. Terrific assist. A nice finish. Solid play all around. And we talk about Anadokounmpo's all-around skills. And tonight, it's been about the scoring. He's put this offense on his back. Now, here's Brogdon. Some stats for him. He averages over 21 points a game. I'll tell you, this has not been his game, and he's making it worse with shot selection like that. Boy, the wheels have definitely fallen off in this quarter. He cannot buy one. Pass to Levert. Fires from deep. Here's Sabonis. Nice work on the board. He's paying off with the basket. Sabonis has got nine. And not a great start for him in the first, but he's quickly starting to turn it around. Holiday against Brogdon. On the wing, Giannis. And he comes up with the deuce. Andre Dekumbo has got 24 points. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. Baskets like this demonstrate who Karis Levert is. This guy is a fighter. Greg, as a young player, one of your mentors was Patrick Ewing. How valuable was that to have that kind of guy uh, tutoring you, mentoring you, What's as up? you were just getting in the NBA? I tell you, he was the consummate professional and, and really an incredible leader by example. This guy spent infinite amount of hours in the gym in the offseason honing his craft first on the floor last to leave it throughout his professional career and that's something he had in common with all the truly greats who ever played the game as hot as he's been this quarter the game plan is simple folks get him the ball and get out of the way and this is his first trip to the line tonight he struggled mightily at the free throw line in their last game And that one misses. And really, the, the ceiling for Antetokounmpo is limitless. I mean, he has the potential to be a Hall of Famer one day. All right, a chance to check out stats for DiVincenzo. How's the last month of basketball been for him? Averaging nine points per game, six rebounds, and three assists. Well, fans of this team take will break. take this kind of production from him without hesitation. I tell you, he has been a solid contributor. They have called his number, and he has delivered for them. The first one falls, and with small ball catching on, it's the rare team, Doris, that looks to go big and play bully ball. Why hasn't that approach been more popular? Well, to me, Kevin, the NBA game is one that's in constant evolution. So right now, the emphasis is three-point shooting, free throw opportunities, and restricted area opportunities. That seems to be the most efficient way to play the game of basketball. On the defensive end, what that requires is positionless players, guys in the post who can guard the perimeter, switchability. All the versatility you can bring to bear on the defensive end is significant, and so that's why bully ball becoming harder and harder to play in today's NBA. Here's Holiday after the basket by Milwaukee. And the foul on Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. 
That's his first foul. The Pacers making a change here. Vitadze's checked in. And I'm glad we got to see the mobile one block once more. What a play. And guys, that's about as good a defensive play as you'll see. Instant reaction to get a hand to the shot. Here's Vitadze. He's averaging a bit over five points a game, and it's in there. And they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing the ball into the paint. Here's Middleton. Good. And it's Giannis picking up the assist. Middleton's got his third basket of the night right there. Holiday against Brogdon. Kicks it to Holiday. Bangs home the trifecta. He can be a forgotten man in their mm. offense sometimes, but the D still has to keep an eye on him. Holiday looking over the floor. Lopez dishes to Middleton. Over Holiday. Middleton can't get it to go. Uh, you can't look at the result of that shot. They'll take that whenever they get it. And they should, because it's when you start turning down that kind of look that your offense can start to bog down a bit. Now, here's DiVincenzo. He's got 12. And Lopez throws it down. Look, if you give Lopez a seven-footer this much room, it's over. Brogdon outside. Shoots over to Vincenzo. I know he's got to be frustrated right now, but the team is fighting from behind. He's got to stay with it. And 10 of their last 12 coming off assists. Indiana's gone one of four from three-point range in the second. Not a whole lot dropping out there for them. Bitadze, the pass to Brogdon. Trying to break that ice-cold streak. Lopez with the block. Here's on to Takumbo. He can't get that one. Good D by Holiday. The Pacers shooting terribly up to this point, just 30%. Some Ram shackle offense play there. Here's Bitadze. Off target from three point range. And here's Giannis. He'll bring it up for the Bucks. Wasted no time on that one. Middleton's got seven points for the quarter. And this is Middleton's game. He's thinking of shooting it even before the pass hits his hands. Vitadze, the pass to Brogdon. Will it go? Rebounded by the Bucks. Even Genzo's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Oh, a tough quarter for him offensively. He hasn't been able to give his team a lift when they need it. The Bucks have been coming through at the charity street. They've made seven of their eight attempts. And really, they haven't been able to differentiate themselves from the free throw line on the season at about 76%. That's good from out of the Kumbo. A different look for Milwaukee. P.J. Tucker comes in for Brooke Lopez. And it's Bryn Forbes in for Drew Holiday. No good on the second free throw. And just a much better job of attacking and getting to the line here in the second quarter. Didn't have a single attempt in the first. Now here's McDermott with two seconds left. And that one comes up a bit short. And so it's Milwaukee going to the break, holding an enormous 36-point lead. They have made it very tough to get a shot off against them. Their defense has been stifling. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Chris, you guys were able to get the lead. What was the key to getting all those open shots? Uh, it was just getting stops and uh, getting rebound and getting out of the cushion, uh, finding lanes, finding open guys. And you made the most of it, Chris. Thanks a lot. Kevin, back to you. Thank you, David. And we'll be back after halftime as the third quarter gets underway. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. 
After one half of play, it's been a one-sided affair. Hey, everybody, welcome back. This is Ernie Johnson alongside Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. A tremendous game we're seeing from Giannis Antetokounmpo. He had 29 points, nine rebounds, and six assists. And after 17 years where they hadn't won a playoff round, the Milwaukee Bucks have surged to prominence behind their MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. What about him um, stands out to you? He's meant everything. Everything. Yeah. You need a superstar player to win at the highest level, and he's it. Yeah, so you draft a player like that outside the ladder, unheard of. It's amazing. Not just a superstar. You said it, Ernie. He's an MVP. Guess what he's doing to Ernie? The, the mean, mean Streets, streets of, of Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And that does it for our halftime show. We now take you back to Kevin Harlan for the start of the third period. And there wasn't too much drama in the first half, but maybe things will tighten up here in the second. You look at Enetokounmpo in this one. He's been everywhere. It's something that isn't his strength, but he's done a great job of finding the open man. Well, what he did was sustain it throughout the first half. He ran the offense to absolute perfection. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it has been a runaway. Middleton and Giannis are the forward tandem. Dante DiVincenzo, he's out there with Holiday, and it's Lopez in at the center, locking down the middle. That's the five on the floor for the Bucks. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. And they're determined to add to the lead, not with more offense, but with big time D. Then against Holiday, five to shoot, 16 feet away. And an excellent defender. The way Holiday disrupts and stays active and engaged on this end, outstanding. Yeah, again, just a lackluster transition defense. Brogdon outside. Well, they've been better than good on the glass today and there is a glaring discrepancy between these two teams in that area getting it done on both ends and it shows up in the score well what i love is the energy they're bringing right now they're ignoring the scoreboard and playing hard that's how you share the rock he does this time and time again here's holiday and he banks in the lane holiday's got nine Wow, what a start. Three for three, terrific play calling, everything clicking out of the gates here. Frogged in the pass to Sumner. Holiday against Brogdon. Passes to Levert. Only 20% shooting in this quarter. They need to settle down and relax a little bit here. They get it back. Here's Giannis, and he uses the glass on the way up. Ronda DeCumbo's got four this quarter. Boy, excellent start to the second half. They've missed just once in five attempts. Avert kicks to Brogdon. A three ball. And Chris Middleton pulls it down. Oh, that was a great effort defensively. Get a hand up in the face of the shooter. It's so important. You've got to respect the range of Holiday if you're the D. Showing he can hurt you from that area. Rogged in the pass to Levert. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. That's on Brooke Lopez. Pacers have made all of their free throws so far tonight, going six for six. Taking two shots.
And he can't get the first one. He hits the second from the line. Clock keeps going. Three minutes into the second half now. To the middle. And the slam dunk by Hans Takumbo. Savvy play from Holiday. Quick thinking helps him get the ball to the wide open man. Lavert with it. 12 points for him. Outside, Zabonis. Five on the clock. On the wing. And he overshot that one, missing. I'm sure if he had the chance to do that possession over again, he would not have taken the shot. Boy, you have to be impressed with the offensive production. They have got it firing on all cylinders. And at this point, it is their game to lose. They've done such a good job building the lead. Here's Brissett, still looking for his first bucket in this one. Up top, Brogdon, guarded by Holiday. Fades and shoots. Atatakumbo pulls it in. Giannis has got 12 rebounds here tonight. Big time effort. Middleton, the pass to Lopez. Whistle blows. Yep, that's going to be a travel. And a chance here to check out some stats for him. And he's got it going at the foul line these days. His free throw percentage looks a lot different in the last 10 games than it did earlier in the season. He, he's tinkered with a few things and really improved his form. The shot by Brogdon, no good. I'll tell you, no matter what he does, he can't find his rhythm, and you get the sense he's starting to press a little bit. They get the rebound. Well, defensively, if you allow him to get this close, you're playing with fire. He just happened to miss that one. Lavert kicks to Brogdon. Sabonis, the pass to Brogdon. Indiana needs to get a shot off. Indiana again, missing. On offense here, the Bucks. They're on a 15-3 run right now. Even Shenzo can't hit it. And so it's a bonus who brings up the ball for the Pacers. A nice shot by Lavert. And there's a deceptive strength to the lean frame of Karis Lavert, showing tremendous strength on his way to a tough finish. Here's Middleton. Second shot opportunity, and the layup is up and in. Middleton's got 14 points for the game. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting it in the paint and continue to score consistently. A nice shot by Lavert. And you know what? He's shaking off the cold shooting performance from the first half. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And how about the numbers here for Drew Holiday? In the second half of this season, he's been nothing short of spectacular. Tenth and steals. And his playmaking ability, unquestioned, one of the top 15 assist men in our league. And talk about being top 10 in steals. I love his jumping the passing lanes and then stealing away your dribble. And the first one at the line is good. A different look for Milwaukee. Abby Portis has checked in for Lopez. Pat Connaughton comes in for Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Bryn Forbes in for Drew Holiday. Both good from the line that time. Indiana's gone 0 of 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Pass to Holiday. Here's Sabonis. Count the bucket coming off a perfectly placed assist. And that's now 11 points for Sabonis. Lost contact on the shot, and now a three point play chance as he'll head to the line. And he's starting to show that killer instinct this quarter, looking to extend the lead. And this is his fourth trip to the free throw line tonight. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for Chris Middleton. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot.
And uh, Indiana shooting 31% here in the third. Offensively, they are looking bleak. Sabonis finds Lamb. And this is what dominating the glass looks like. He just cannot be contained. Wow, what a performance. And he's not just winning with physical ability. He's winning with anticipation. Well, overall, they're the team getting the better looks here in this second half. And I think what's happening is they're getting their shots within the flow of their offense, and you can clearly see the difference. Now here's Lamb, the eight-footer. Sabonis, no good. To the wing right side. And Forbes kicks to Giannis. And the slam dunk by Antetokounmpo. And how about the initiative there from Antetokounmpo? Excellent at seeing lanes to the basket and then just taking advantage. Here's McConnell. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. No good from Lamb. And the 22nd pick in 2015, Bobby Portis with a nice shooting touch. And at the same time, not afraid to mix it up. Maybe to a fault. At times we've seen him get caught in the heat of the moment. you got to channel that competitive edge and stay strong mentally. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Two shots. Oh, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he makes the first. And if they continue, Kevin, their outstanding free throw shooting, that'll help them seal the deal. Goga Bitadze's checked in for the Pacers. And so he makes both from the line. And so it's Indiana with it. Now McConnell. He kicks it to McDermott. He dishes it to Lamb. Six to shoot. And there's the pass to McDermott. Here's McConnell. And that time, also a missed shot. No matter what looks they get, they just can't convert to stop this run. And I think you can start to feel their frustration mounting. With every missed bucket, it becomes more and more desperate. You can see the evolution of Giannis as a passer. He's gotten good at thinking for himself and his teammates. Now here is Holiday. No points in the game yet for him. Always helps to get these kinds of looks, right? Super easy to convert from that distance. Forbes dishes to Giannis. He's looking for Tucker and finds him. Good. And it's Giannis picking up the assist. Giannis has got assist number 10 tonight with that last one. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Tries from 16, and the jumper is good. You can't just stop when there's a pick set up. Got to fight over it as a defender. You know exactly what that takes. It takes energy, it takes activity, it takes intensity. Yeah, three consecutive field goals have come right at the rim. The D had better start buckling now. So far tonight, he's gone four of six at the line. Justin Holliday's checked in for Jeremy Lamb. One shot. Free throw, good. Honest. And the Pacers with possession here. Here's McConnell. Pass to Holiday. The dish to McDermott. Back to Holiday. Milwaukee with the rebound. To the inside, Tucker. That one is good. He's only missed one shot of his six taken on the floor. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. Passes it to McConnell. The kick out to Holiday. McConnell passes to Holiday. 
and the officials call it traveling violation. This break gives us a chance to see the league's best fast break teams in the second half of the season. They've really wrapped up the energy. Number one, the Pacers. You know, the NBA season is a marathon, but the way they played since the break, man, they're running a sprint. How about that transition offense? You know, he's flat fueling their success. Most of the offense has gone through him. Holiday, the pass to McConnell. Back to Holiday. McConnell kicks to Holiday. Shoots over Portis. And the rejection by Adekumbo. And it's going to be a 24 second shot clock violation. They turn it over. Jordan and Mora. Jeff T. Pass to Nora. The feed to Tucker. Kicks to Forbes. Lock at six. The Bucks need to get a shot off here. A three-pointer off the mark. And so Holiday will bring it up for Indiana. The pass to McConnell. To the left side wing. McDermott finds McConnell. Can they get it? And he gets it back. And so it's Milwaukee able to put on a show for the agents. They've been playing some ferocious defense. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. Now let's take a look at our assist of the game presented by State Farm. And, you know, you can always count on him for at least a couple of these pretty assists over the course of a game. And this one, a thing of beauty. You know a thing or two about a point guard's job. Set the table for your teammates. Done there perfectly. And with the fourth quarter upon us, time is running out for this game to become competitive. And a look at the five for the Pacers to start the fourth quarter. They've got Martin, and it's McConnell in at the point. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Doris, you and I know the quality of play in the NBA bubble was terrific. And some people have said a lack of travel, a possible reason why. The league, we think, looking at ways to reduce travel moving forward. Take a break. Exactly, Take a break. Kevin. And one option Two on the table is the, quote, series model. You see it in baseball, where you play consecutive games against a single opponent. So what about the states with multiple teams, New York or California? Can you play all of those teams in one trip? This not only preserves players, but it also cuts travel expenses, something the league is looking hard at. And so Teague gets two free throws. Well, Jeff Teague is a very capable scorer from the lead guard position. He plays with a high motor. He can make shots. This guy is very good at the point. Now, here's McConnell. Rebound, Milwaukee. Portis has got rebound number 12 here already in the game. Here's Nora. They grab their own miss. Martin with the block. And here's McConnell. Bitadze, the pass to Holiday. Left side, Martin. All by himself, trying to step up. He's got to be frustrated with the miss. And uh, Indiana shooting a terrible 27% from the floor. Boy, an off night for them, to say the least. Right now, we're seeing more athletes willing to talk about mental challenges, be it depression or anxiety. And you know, Doris, the NBA is no exception. How encouraging do you find that? Well, I think that whether NBA players or professional athletes in any sport know it or not, they are looked to as examples, as role models. And so I think everybody wins in this situation, Kevin. The players, the fans themselves, many of whom are dealing with the similar challenges. So 
Listen, life is not easy. Wherever you can get help, go and take it. I love this initiative from the NBA. The Bucks making a switch here. Onto the Kumbos checked in. So he hits one of two from the stripe. He dodges a a shot missing. The Bucks go the other way with it. Martin with the block. Poke loose. And they're pushing it up. And it's slammed in by T. And, and buckets like that have been hard to come by. Not the most exciting game. Both sides look way off in terms of their shooting. Well, you have to appreciate the defensive battle for sure. Both squads struggling on the offensive end. We call this grit and grind. Now, here's McConnell. He's covered closely. Here's Bitadze. And he battles for the ball and gets the second chance bucket. Well, just it's easy to say. This guy wanted it more. Creating the second chance opportunity and cashing in. Pass to Tucker. Teague surveying the D. Back to Tucker. Three-pointer. And the rebound goes to Martin. Well, after hitting one triple in the first half, it's been all radio silence since. And he lays it up and in. Ripping and, and running. They have a big advantage now in those transition opportunities. Now, here's McConnell. Passes it to Bichadze. You know, Doris, teams are using analytics more than ever before. We know that. For example, blocks are certainly a key number. But some defenders, as you know, are so good, teams don't even go at them because of those analytical numbers. Kevin, we refer to that as shot suppression. And you have to look no further than the last two winners of the Defensive Player of the Year Award, Giannis Antetokounmpo and Rudy Gobert. When those two guys are in the middle of the paint, a ball handler or would-be shot taker may reverse force and reset the offense. That's how much those guys impact the game on the defensive end. McConnell with it. Pass to Mark. Back to McConnell. Launches it. Rebound, Milwaukee. Holiday with the block. Here's Sampson. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Samson's got his first basket. Well, get it inside to a quality score and let this guy do his thing. Here's Nora. A rebound by Bitadze. Bitadze has got six rebounds now in the game. And it's Martin missing. Oh, that's terrific defense there. That's how you protect the rim. Tucker, and that comes off the assist by Jeff T. This is exactly what you hope for from your point guard, Jeff Teague, unselfishly pulling all the right strings. Now McConnell. And since last season, Doris, a lot of coaching changes. Why do you think so many? Kevin, I think there's a lot of contributing factors. Some of it is ownership and front office changes. Whenever that happens, coaching changes are often the next shoe to drop. Now, here's Tucker over Martin. It's rebounded by Indiana. Bitadze's got rebound number seven for him tonight. The shot by Holiday, no good. Boy, that's the kind of look this offense is designed to create. That's just a tough miss. And this is why coaches talk about playing with pace. The scoreboard tells it all. I think this is what we call, quote, running a team off the floor. They have been fantastic in transition. Well, if you don't take care of the ball, fellas, that's what can happen. Absolutely, Greg. That makes the turnover even more painful. At the end of the day, though, it's two points. Don't hang your heads. Let's get refocused and play with more patience. Now here is Martin. Fires the three. A shot off that time. 
Milwaukee's gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. On to Takumbo with the bucket. That makes it 10 of their last 12 coming from inside the paint. Here's McConnell. He lobs it up. Indiana again turning it over. And that's just carelessness there. I mean, you have got to have your head in the game. And the Bucks making a change here. Lopez is checked in. Indiana also making some changes. Jeremy Lamb comes in for Justin Holiday, and Aaron Holiday is subbed in for T.J. McConnell. Now here's Teague. Lopez finds Teague. Here's Nora. To the paint. Here's Antetokounmpo. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. One shot. You know, Doris, I've heard some experts say, you look at the six-foul limit, the NBA is basically the only sports that takes stars off the floor. Doris, what would you think if they just tacked on an extra free throw instead? Kevin, I absolutely hate the idea. The best defensive teams at any level of basketball guard at a high level without fouling. There's the drama aspect of a player being in foul trouble, either at the start of the game or down the stretch. It has an impact on strategy. It's something that I'm a traditionalist on. I think the six foul rule should remain in the game. That free throw, no good. And the second free throw, good. And it's Teague with the ball, but he brings it up for the Milwaukee Bucks. They've given up just eight points in the fourth quarter. A rebound by Bitadze. Bitadze's got rebound number eight now on the night. Here's Martin. The teardrop falls in. And it's all about the release when you shoot the float. Teague against Holiday. Teague drives in. Oh, my goodness. The vicious dunk by Jeff Teague completes the drive with a big-time attack of the rim. Bitadze, the pass to Lamb. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. That's on Brooke Lopez. Doris, as we've seen, NBA players are becoming more vocal on social issues. And some will say, keep politics out of sports. Should the NBA and should all sports leagues be worried about that backlash? Kevin, one of the things I admire most about the NBA is its commitment to the causes it believes in. And whether we are talking about the mental health issues of some of their players or the current situation in the country, the NBA's commitment to supporting equality and social justice is admirable. What is controversial about equality and social justice for all? Nothing. I admire their commitment. They're on the right track. Portis, he's checked in for Lopez. Milwaukee's gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. Banked in off the glass. When you allow good scores to get uncontested shots at the rim, no wonder you're losing. To me, this has simply stated been a complete lack of defensive attention and focus all night long. Here's Lamb, the offensive rebound, and the call on the shot that sends him to the line. That's his first personal foul. Well, the pandemic impacting earnings all over the NBA, Doris, the pain is felt, we think, most keenly by small market teams. 
homes. Across the board, Kevin, there are economic realities that the pandemic has forced NBA teams to look at. But always, those small market teams depend on revenue sharing to compete. So now attendance is compromised, and their ledger is affected even more. This is going to be interesting to see how this affects roster composition. Boy, we've got a lot of questions to be answered. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. Here's Teague. Lays it up off the glass. Teague's got 10 points in just the second half. Boy, it'll take more than that to stop Jeff Teague. Just determined to score despite any obstacle. Outside, Lamb. Just five on the clock. Dishes it to Martin. Now the pass to Holiday. The second chance effort. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That's his first personal foul. And in last year's playoffs, we saw zone defense turn the tide in certain games. And Doris, we know when executed well, they can throw an offense completely out of rhythm. Kevin, I'm going to go back a step further to the Toronto Raptors championship two years ago where they throw a box in one, a triangle in two, and multiple zone looks that helps them win a championship. Look no further than Miami's deep run in last year's playoffs. Listen, that can change the whole rhythm of a game. It can force an offense to start second-guessing itself. When you can change the rhythm, the tempo, and mix looks and force a team to think and really operate under duress, it only helps you win ball games. Milwaukee's gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. Taken away by Holiday. Just two. And he makes good on the layup. Well, there's an aggressive mentality in play. Working close, find a way to score. And for Milwaukee, they're shooting an incredible 64% from the field in this game. Teague drives in. It's blocked. And it's out of bounds. The Bucks able to retain possession here. On defense, Indiana. Down through the hoop it goes. That's his fifth make on nine shots from the floor. Holiday, the pass to Bitadze. He dishes it to Lamb. On the wing, Holiday. Six on the shot clock. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Holiday's got five points in the quarter. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for Milwaukee. Two great rebounding teams. And these guys worked just a little bit harder tonight. And that was the edge they needed. And so checking out their season record, this game will become their 45th win. And this will be their third win in three tries against these guys. They match up so well. And, you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for Giannis. Boy, I think you could pick about any area of this basketball game and feel like he excelled in it. He was a dominant figure at both ends of the floor and finishes with a triple-double. What an unbelievable performance. That's his second personal foul. Third team foul. Shooting for Milwaukee. Bobby Portis at the line for two. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. Free throw. Good. Portis. Both shots good from the strike. 27 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. 
Pass to Holiday. No good on the shot. Great tee that time from T. And so it's the Bucks taking care of business in this one. And the outcome of this one was never in doubt. And boy, they really put in a supreme effort. I, it just felt like once they had that lead and it was comfortable, they were not going to relinquish it. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks very much. Giannis, congratulations. How did your team come out on top tonight? We just played hard uh, and we played defense. That's the most important thing. So that's what we do. We play defense. We leave by the ball we run. That's what we did tonight. We play defense. And it led to a big, big win, man. Congratulations. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that about wraps it up for Doris Burke, David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and the rest of our terrific 2K Sports crew. This is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long, everyone.